Hi there, thanks for watching. In this video, we'll be making an iOS application for the first time. So essentially, this is just a Hello World app that we'll be running on the simulator or the device. But to get started, you will need a Mac for this. So I don't know whether you want to buy a cheap Mac if you don't currently have one, or if you currently have one and you're looking to start development, this is how we can do that. So the first task is to get Xcode from the Mac OS App Store. And this can be done by searching Xcode into the top bar here under search. And when you do that, you should have an installation option. I currently have this installed and it's about six gigabytes. So it may take some time depending on your internet connection. But once that has finished and we have Xcode, we can simply open that. And like I said, this won't be available for Windows, it's Mac only. So if we hit open at this point, we should be given this screen, which simply says, welcome to Xcode. And we have the recent projects here on the side. We can get started with a new Xcode playground. And this just allows us to play with Swift and other concepts in a quick and easy fashion. Outside of that, we can either open an existing project or create a new project. I'm going to hit create a new Xcode project. And at this point, we're given the option to select one of many templates. We can have things like a single view application, a game, augmented reality, and much more. At this point, we'll just simply stick with our single view application and hit the next button. I want you to then give this a product name of something like my first app or even hello world. If you have a team selected, you maybe should select a development team. Otherwise, just simply leave that to be none. And we also have things like the organization name and the organization identifier. So at this point, my domain is paulhalliday.io. So as you can see, it's a reversed syntax. So we have io.paulhalliday. And then our application name, which is hello world, will give us io.paulhalliday.hello world. Now, as far as language goes, I would like you to keep this at Swift at this point, but it really doesn't matter what we click outside of any other options on this screen. Just to ensure that at this point in time, you don't have any of these checkboxes ticked as we'll be looking at these things in future lectures. For now, let's hit next. And after which you'll be given a folder to create this application inside of. Hit create, and then we'll be given this screen, which gives us some information about our application. So the first thing that I'd advise before even jumping into any of the coding or storyboarding is just actually getting familiar with the Xcode environment itself. As you can see in a second, we do have some contextual tabs here if we were to select the main storyboard. So let's just left click that and you'll see that now we have these extra tabs here on the side. These give us more information about our project, but for now, all we want to do is sort of drag this a little bit further upwards and take the bottom panel up like this. At this point, I then also want to drag this label here on screen. If we just take it and drag it onto our storyboard like this, this then gives us the opportunity to change the text of this label. So in a standard Hello World application, we would usually either double click this label or edit the label here on the right. So if we just Put this further down again like this because we don't need to make any more labels at this point. Underneath the text of plane, we can simply change the text to hello world. Now, if we then look at our application, we can hold alt and sort of scroll into the screen like this. Or alternatively, we can use this plus and minus here to zoom into the canvas as well. You'll notice that our label has this truncated dot. So we have these ellipses at the end of our text. And that's because the boundary box for our label is too small for the content that we want to add to the label itself. So there are a few ways around this and there's a few ways of making some changes to ensure that our text fits in the box. The first one is just literally taking it at the bottom here and making it bigger. As you can see, we then have this box. And if you think of the HTML box model, you'll notice that we have a similar concept right here. So I'm gonna make this text about this big, and I'm also gonna move it to the top of the page. You'll notice that Xcode also gives us these boundaries. So at this point, we can also see that this is the middle of the page. But in order to get that absolute positioning, it's always good to only make the box as wide as you need it to be at this point. 
But what if we wanted to be a bit more precise? Perhaps we also want to change the font to something like 40. So let's click this T and change the size to be 40. And when we hit done, you'll notice that once again, we don't fit inside of this box. Well, that's where this ruler comes in handy. And this is known as the size inspector and it allows us to change the width like so. For example, if we wanted to be really precise, we could say that we wanted this width to be 200. And this then gives us this boundary box being 200 in size. And maybe we want to change the height to something like 40. We could position this back inside of the middle of our canvas. But what if we wanted to change some aspects of our canvas? Well, we could go back to what's known as the attribute inspector. And the attribute inspector, when clicked on the canvas itself, so not the label, so this is what's known as the view, we can then change the background. So once we hit background, you'll notice that we then have the opportunity to select one of many colors. We can use the color picker like so. And you'll notice that these colors are cycled live on screen. So we don't actually have to say yes to this dialog box before we see the color. We can also select from a predefined pencil. So we have things like teal, sea foam, turquoise, and much more. I'm going to select something like plum. And as we've selected plum, we're now noticing that maybe this contrast ratio is not good enough on this text. So we want to change the color of the font to be snow. And we now have an application that says hello world and has this white text. But what if we wanted to duplicate this label? Well, if I hold down alt and I drag it down, you'll notice that it does give us this sort of outline of the hello world label and also this plus sign on the cursor. If I, while keeping alt down and the left mouse button, just let go of the left mouse button, you'll notice that it duplicates this label. Let's place this in the middle of the screen and you'll notice that Xcode does tell us where that is by these boundary boxes. And we'll change the font of the label by double clicking on the label itself and saying my name is Paul Halliday. We can also change the boundary box like so and place this in the middle. If we wanted to, we could move our hello world text down like so. And we now say, hello world, my name is Paul Halliday. So how do we get this on a device? We've made our application. We want to display this on the device and see what it looks like. Well, in Xcode, that's quite easy. All we need to do is go to this top button right here. So the very top left of the screen and hit build and then run on the current selected device. Now, if you have an appropriate iOS device attached to your machine, you could then select this from the dropdown. For now, we'll just select the iPhone 8 Plus and hit this play button. It may come up saying enable developer mode on this Mac. Simply hit enable to continue. You may need to also type in your passwords and hit OK on the dialog. You may see something like the build has succeeded on the screen, and then it will tell you at the top here in this sort of progress window that it is launching the application. Your emulator will then appear on the screen. If we hit this green button here, it will take up the full bounds of our screen. And simulators themselves do often take some time to get started. So you may need to potentially go get a coffee while this is up and running. And there we have our application and it says, hello world, my name is Paul Halliday, but notice that we have something wrong. You'll see that our layout at this point doesn't match the iPhone 8 Plus. So there are ways to fix this and that's because at this point in time, we are viewing our application on an iPhone 8. So I want you to select this at the bottom of the screen and play around with a few different device types. For example, we have the iPhone 10 here. And the iPhone 10 gives us the appropriate bounding box for the notch as well as the bottom home screen tab. But let's hit the iPhone 8 Plus and let's move things in the middle once again. Now there are better ways to do this across the device and that's something we'll be looking at in future videos. But what I want you to do now is hit the play button once again. I'm going to hit don't show this message again and I want the application to be stopped on the current emulator. 
Once we start our application again, you can see that our content is now in the middle and you've made your first iOS application. It might not have many bells and whistles at this point, but you can start to appreciate just how easy it is to get started with iOS. If you'd like to see more of these videos, then please hit that subscribe button to support the channel and stay updated with the subsequent videos. As well as that, let me know what you think inside of the comments section below. I do have lots of premium courses available at paulhalliday.io that you can check out if you're interested in my other training material. Until next time, I'll see you very soon in my next video.